Thank you, um, Kian Corla. Uh, Taoiseach, I think everybody in this House would, uh, in the first instance, have to uh, commend and uh, pay tribute to Senator Martin McAleese and his team for the very comprehensive and substantive report uh, which has revealed hitherto unknown facts about state involvement in the Magdalene laundries. Uh, I also want to say unequivocally that it was the right decision uh, to set up such a committee. And it was a good decision. And it is a comprehensive and it is a substantive report. However, Tishuk, for whatever reason, uh, rightly or wrongly, expectations were raised in advance of the publication of the report yesterday uh, that there would be a comprehensive response to the issues raised in the report, uh, particularly those representing uh, survivors of the Magdalen laundries were certainly of the view or had the impression uh, that such a comprehensive uh, response uh, would emanate from yourself and um, from the government. And it would appear, and I would have to say, Tishuk, that um, having read the executive summary of the report uh, and other aspects of the report, that it is clear that an unequivocal apology should be given to the women of the Mag Magdalene Laundries uh, by the officers of the state. Uh, and it should be given uh, by you, Tishuk, obviously, on all our behalf, in your capacity as Tishuk and as head of government. And essentially, an apology such as that would say to the women involved that what was done to you was wrong. Uh, no ifs, no buts. And the apology is on behalf of government, on behalf of the state, and on behalf of all the citizens. And no ifs or no buts. Because you can qualify reports, you can qualify a whole range of aspects uh, to the issue, as you can with any other issue. But the fundamental point is, and the fundamental point that comes out of this report, is the denial of fundamental human rights. And I accept different eras and the arguments about historically looking back, but fundamentally what comes out of the report is a denial of the right to freedom, the loss of freedom and the denial of contact with the outside world, exacerbated and compounded, whether by omission or commission on behalf of the state, by its involvement, uh, but also compounded by the absence and the, the lack and the undermining of educational, health and welfare rights, which clearly were significant factors as well uh, in the life experience of the women involved. And given the publication of the report, I think the moment is now, Tisha, um, when such an apology on behalf of society um, should uh, be issued, given what has emerged from the, the report itself. Thank you. And I would also say, Tishik, that as an immediate response, in addition to an apology, I think justice for the Magdalene and Laundry have suggested, and I think it's a very good proposal, that a dedicated unit uh, within the Department of Justice should be established, which would be an interdepartmental hub to coordinate uh, remaining aspects of the state's response to this issue, uh, including the issue of redress, which should also be provided. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Tishuk. Um, the, the, the report which was commissioned by the government, uh, which Senator McAleese chaired, was one that was determined in consultation with uh, Minister Shatter and Minister Strait Lynch, actually before the United Nations Committee made their recommendation. This, however, is about women and young girls who entered Magdalene laundries uh, through a variety of routes. As the report points out, this is not a simple, single issue. I want to say that the government are genuinely concerned here at bringing about reconciliation and closure uh, to the women involved here. I spent a considerable period of late last night reading sections of this thousand-page report. It makes for harrowing reading in many respects. I think it's important also to say, Cancorla, that the, the truth has been exposed by the McAleese report. Uh, and in that regard, the first and major issue 
which was of concern to the girls, young women uh, who were in the Magdalene laundries, was the removal of the stigma attached to them. And for the first time, their stories have been told, their stories have been recorded, their stories have been published, and their stories are believed. Now, I like to think that we don't get into adversarial diplomacy here in the House about an issue that is as sensitive and as, um, as um, evocative of bad memories for so many people. And that's why I suggested yesterday that what we should do is reflect deeply on, this, uh, on the findings of the report, the facts as outlined here, and that we come back in two weeks to discuss that. In the meantime, I'd like to think that government itself would reflect on the findings of the report and that we put in place uh, a process by which the survivors of the Magdalene Laundries, of which I understand there may be, may be between 800 to 1,000 women, uh, each with their own particular circumstances, many of them having come through different routes to the Magdalene Laundries, but in understanding the emotional, the emotional um, um, state of mind that many of these young girls, when they enter the Magdalene Laundries, that we, as a state and as a government, look at what is the most appropriate um, um, assistance that can be given to deal with their, um, with the consequences of their experience in the Magdalene Laundries. This is not a matter for idle comment or a matter for flippant politics. It is a matter of intense seriousness for those who are involved and for those of us who have a responsibility now. So I'd like to, I'd like to say, um, in response to Deputy Martin's question, um, I re repeat again my sense of, of deep sorrow for all of those women who went through that regime. But I think it's, I think it's only appropriate that for the first time ever, having, uh, having had access to material not seen by the public before, and the truth uh, uh, of their stories being exposed by the uh, committee report, and their stories being believed, that we should, uh, as, a, as, a, as, as, as an Iraqis, principally as a government, uh, see what is the best, the best way of bringing about closure and reconciliation um, and assistance in respect of, of those um, survivors of the Magdalene Laundries. And I would hope that when we get to the, uh, to the debate here in two weeks on the report that we can, um, we can set out what it is that we think is most appropriate, can call it. Thank you, Tisha. Deputy Martin. Could I say to the teacher that I'm not in any shape or form pursuing this in an adversarial way or indeed in an idle way or um, a speculative way. But in essence, the report itself, substantive and comprehensive as it is, doesn't actually take away um, any stigma uh, in, in its entirety. The only effective way for the women involved for any stigma to be removed is by the state formally apologizing to the women concerned which essentially says what happened to you in Irish society during that period was wrong. No ifs or no buts. Now I can recall I was involved in relation to the industrial schools uh, and I chaired an interdepartmental committee uh, that led to a state apology in May 1999 to the survivors of the industrial schools. And I regret and I'm sorry that we didn't deal with the Maglid and Laundry uh, question in tandem with, 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 with the, the industrial schools issue. Huge issues at the time, enormous numbers. But the point I would make, Tishuk, just from my own experience, having met with the women involved in Golden Bridge at the time, that the most fundamental need that they articulated to me, above and beyond anything else, redress, any other responses, was just for somebody to say to us that what was done to you was wrong, 
It wasn't our fault, and we are sorry for it. And the same applies now, well, without question, to the women of the Magladin laundries. The government of the day has to stand up and say on behalf of all of us and on behalf of society that what was done to you was wrong. Thank you. When that original apology was made, there was no talk of redress at the time. Uh, there was no, you know, people had, we, there was other issues were dealt with, education, welfare, housing, and so on. Um, and legal uh, obstacles removed for people to pursue issues. And then subsequently other things happened. Uh, and as I said, mechanisms can be put in place to deal with other issues uh, that will undoubtedly flow from this report. But the now that the report is published, the essential route to actually removing any sense of uh, culpability that people may have themselves, any sense of wonder or any sense of questioning as to why they were placed in these laundries, and that comes out in the report, the sense of why were we put in here as young people, when will we ever be released, the loss of freedom, the denial of contact. Thank you, uh, all has left a deep and profound and traumatic impact and negative impact on their lives, as the executive summary concludes. The only way to actually uh, bring closure in the first instance to those women is for the state to apologise unequivocally. Thank you. And Deputy. I would put that to you in a respectful way, Tishik, and in a non-adversarial way. Thank you. Please, Well, I, I accept your comment, um, Deputy Martin, that your, your, your expression of sorrow uh, of not having dealt with the Magdalene Laundry situation uh, when responsibility was yours and your parties. If I recall correctly, you um, refused to actually investigate it then. That's a different issue. This government is dealing with it. And in the context of the, of the McAleese report, which sets out the, uh, the truth here, I think it should also be recognised uh, in complimenting Senator McAleese that that report, which has been waited for very many years, cost 11,000 euro approximately, in comparison to other reports which have cost millions, and that no member of the committee accepted any stipend for their work in this. Now, this government has to deal with what's in the McAleese report, and we will deal with it. But because it's an issue that is complex, that in regard to those women who were in Magdalene laundries, that there can be no discrimination in the sense of the environment in which they had to live can be held, despite the fact that they came from different routes to the laundries. I, I think it's, it's, only, it's only right and proper that we take the report, that we examine it individually and collectively as a government, and decide what is the best approach to dealing with the needs and the requirements of the survivors of the Magdalene laundries, and to deal with those in the most appropriate and fitting manner that we can. And I would like to apply ourselves to that in the intervening period before the, the House to base the report here in two weeks' time. Um, from the, from the, um, the report given uh, and the briefing given uh, to Cabinet by Senator McAleese, it's very clear that from the people who spoke to him and to his committee, that their overriding, their overriding requirement was to have the, the stigma attached to the Magdalene laundries removed. But it is fair to say that their other overriding concern was a sense of fear that they had at not knowing when they might be able to leave the Magdalene laundries. So, on my part, I want to say this to the House, that um, this is an issue that has affected the lives of women negatively, as is pointed out in the report. But it also has implications in regard to their, to their families, in many cases, um, and to their circle of friends. 
So I would like genuinely to say that um, the process by which we bring closure and reconciliation here is one that does deserve really genuine consideration by government, and I intend to see that that happens. Um, from that point of view, I'd like the space uh, to work with government and putting in place a process and a structure by which the state can, um, insofar as it can, bring closure and reconciliation in regard to these women and help them in whatever way that we can. Thank you.